I got saved when I was five years old. Growing up, I tried to play the role of the good Christian kid. <sighs> tried doing all the right things, saying all the right things, going to church twice a week. I was even in Bible quiz. I memorized so many books of the Bible, but <laughs> the words never sunk in. I knew them all in my mind, but I didn't like feel them in my heart. I was never on fire for God. Like, for example, during worship services, I would stand in the back watching a couple crazy people go up to the front and start dancing and lifting up their hands and jumping around and like, <laughs> okay, whatever, I'll worship God in my way. But I was wrong. There's only one way to worship God, and that's with all your heart. And if you're truly in love with God, that's going to show. After graduation in 2009, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I just kept working the job I had. I never asked God what he wanted me to do. And that's when my life started going downhill. I got into pornography. That's a nasty sin. It's so hard to stop what you started. I got addicted to video games. When I say addicted, I mean addicted. <laughs> There's some Saturdays where I play like 15, 16 hours with hardly any breaks. Video games by themselves make me earn a sin, at least some of them, but if they take priority over God, and you make an idol out of them, then yes, they are a sin. I stopped going to church. I hadn't read the Bible or prayed in so long. I started getting really depressed. And this went on for like six, seven, eight months. And then in June, I got an invitation to go to Desperation. I don't know why, but I turned it down. And I regretted that decision. But since it's past the deadline for me to sign up, there's nothing I could do about it. And I started calling out to God. Because I knew, you know, I knew I needed to change my life. I'm like, Lord, I'm tired of running away from you. Take control of my life. Lord, give me another chance to go to desperation, Lord. Maybe it won't fix everything in my life, but it'll be a start, Lord. I'll make the most out of it. And I started getting this crazy idea in my head. <laughs> I'm being totally serious that this crazy idea that some sort of missions opportunity would become available to me at desperation. <laughs> but that never was going to happen, so... Anyway, yeah. A week before the youth group was gonna leave for Colorado, they decided to rent a bus so more people could go. And I got another invitation. This time I said yes. And it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made. Desperation was amazing. It was life changing. The worship was so intense. The speakers were on fire. And at the end, I took the vow and I promised to live my life differently. I promised to God that I would get rid of this in my life. That Thursday, after we got back, God convicted me about my video games. Not to just limit myself to how much I played, but to completely get rid of my PlayStation 3. I'm like, all right, God, I'll do it. So the next morning, instead of getting rid of it right away, I decided to have one last go around. So when I'm trying to get on it, 
it just wouldn't turn on. It wouldn't turn on. No matter how many times I tried, no matter what I did to try to fix it, it wouldn't turn on. Maybe that's a coincidence, but I don't think so. I never ever had a problem with it before, not a single one. And I had played it earlier that week. And then the day after, God told me to get rid of it. It stopped working. My addiction to porn was a lot harder to overcome. And I stumbled a couple times. After desperation, two or three weeks after desperation, I stumbled. But God told me. I did overcome, and it's only by his power that I was able to do that, because I didn't have the strength of myself. Since then, and I've grown more in my relationship with Jesus than ever before in my entire life. The joy I feel inside is so amazing. It's overwhelming at times. There are times when I'm just thinking about God's love for me and how much I love him I'll just start crying and I just feel this connection it's beautiful and I love it I love Jesus I've always felt like deep down inside if I totally surrendered myself to God and his will for my life that he would tell me to get into the ministry that's probably why I didn't surrender myself, because I didn't want to do that. And then finally, in desperation, I was crying out to God. I told him whatever he wanted me to do, wherever he wanted me to go, I'd do it. Not long after that, a video of Britt Hancock talking about how he's going to train 12 young people to become missionaries to darkest regions in the world. Um, <laughs> I knew. I just knew. Can't describe the feeling I had. I just knew. <sighs> when I went back to the hotel room that night, I was laying in my bed praying. I'm like, God, come on, you got the wrong person. You got the wrong person. I'm this awkward, shy, homeschool kid from Wisconsin and you want me to become a missionary? <laughs> you got the wrong person. Are you serious? Come on. Funny joke God. Come on. But no. I ended up signing up for Mountain Gateway that next morning. Hardly a day went by when I wasn't praying about this. Like, Lord, this is your will for my life. Make that clear to me. Clear. And if it's not, then close the door on it. Every day, I would do that. A couple weeks after desperation, I hadn't heard anything back, and some doubt started creeping in about whether I was called or not, and... I was kind of hoping at the same time that I wasn't called, so I could stay in my comfort zone, you know. And then, Sunday morning, someone was speaking in tongues, and then right after they finished, there's interpretation. I got that with me, and I'm going to read it. I'm calling you out of your complacency. I am calling you out of your complacency. Step out and obey me. Just take a risk with me and step out and obey me. I'm calling missionaries just where you are. I'm calling missionaries to foreign lands to many nations. Step out of your complacency. Trust me. Trust me. I am calling you. I'm calling you out of your complacency. And I felt like he was, God was speaking directly to me. When I heard those words, I was like, that's pretty clear. <laughs> Now I see those words, it's such an encouragement. Just take a risk with me and step out and obey me. Step out of your complacency. Trust me, 
Trust me. I'm calling you. 